Hello there everyone and thank you for rejoining me here in Equestria War in which we're playing as the Realm of Kyria. I'm your host Mr. Mocha Lover of course. And as a reminder, this campaign is a demo version or a development version of the mod in which everything here that we're doing might be changed when this actually comes out. If it's already out, it might be, it might not be. But this is just a demo version or development version of the Realm of Kyria currently. Kyria. Check balances. Autumn Blaze crumpled up yet another piece of paper in her magic and turned it into ash with a little frustration channeled through her horn. She'd been stuck in her office all day because she couldn't find the right way to word the draft of the bill in front of her. She's about to set it aside and try it again later when the door to her study opened and her brown Kieran stepped in with a fresh stack of papers for the premiere to look at. When the newcomer saw Autumn's exasperation, however, she paused in the doorway and frowned. Autumn, is this a bad time? Autumn sighed and waved the Kieran him. No, Cinder Glow, it's not. I've just been beating my face against a table for Concord knows how many hours now, and I've gotten basically nowhere with a new constitution. Cinder Glow bit her lip and stepped closer. What's the problem then? She asked her premier and party leader. Read it out loud to me. Maybe that'll help you figure something out. Well, it's worth a shot at least. Autumn took a deep breath, sat upright, and pulled out her stack of notes. I've been trying to get to work every Kieran's concerns into the new constitution. And that's going fine, I guess. Executive power of our matriarch, her court, and the reform bureau is pretty cut and dry. The morning secretariat's legislative abilities are fine, too, but it's the whole thing with the courts back in the day. Legal disputes were settled by priests who determined which party Concord favor, but you can just imagine how big of a problem that could easily become. Current and his allies just want to import Griffonian judicial law wholesale, but Griffonian society is entirely different from Kieran's society. How can we just import that without considering our own heritage? And of course, Winterfrost wants things to stay exactly how they are. And Rising Sun thinks we should make our own basis starting from the assumption that all creatures are equal in Concord's vision. You might just have to favor one over the other as the starting point for the bell will soon go offer. Use one idea as a basis and work backwards from there to reach a good enough compromise for Kieran's society. It will definitely favor one side more than others, but finding a compromise that makes every Kieran happy ends up making no Kieran happy, right? Griffoni has a modern judicial system. We should start there and work backwards. The way of fire is inseparable from Kieran's society. It should be the basis. All Christians should be equal before Concord. That's where we start. Well, as much as I want more political power, uh, I'll probably go this one for supremacy because that's I, honestly at this point like uh, that's the way I'm really leaning towards. But we're doing an industrial convocation, which I read last time. But if the realm is a leapfrog over hundred years of misprogress and modernization, then I need Kieran educated and trained and borrowed to make it happen. Michael Kern will use his literati, literati ties to the Kieran diaspora to bring many of the Kieran species' best and brightest minds home to help modernize the nation. But it is still surreal to me that I am now living in my ancestral motherland. I may, have, I may have been born in Skyfall and spent the better part of 54 years of my life in Grifonia and Equus, but Kyria has always tugged at my heart from afar. I grew up hearing stories from my grandfather about the country left behind and the family he had to say goodbye to. Um, and though those memories are tinted rose with the passage of time, the stories he told were not happy ones. A silence. Destroyed a successful trading company and uprooted so many Kieran like him. Kieran who fled across the world to try to find a better life than the matriarch in the way of fire forced upon them at home. Those who do not flee were left destitute in an apocalyptic waste aftermath of economic suicide. Who knows how many relatives of my family once who had faded into obscurity and squalor because they could not flee to Griffonia like my grandfather did. I have thought many times about reconnecting with distant relatives who spent their entire lives living in the silence instead of abroad, but always decided against it. What family have lived in Griffonia with me, not in Kyria, and those who lived here would only be asking for hoofouts from a successful business Kieran who made his fortune in more opportune places. But, uh, now that I've returned to Kyria, there is much work to be done. Foremost among these tasks is bringing back the diaspora and making sure that their voices will be heard in the reconstruction of our nation. Kyria is hopeless without her foals, educated abroad. Foals who have gone on to be successful capitalists, industrials, scientists, inventors, entrepreneurs, and more nations that appreciated their talents. From the moment I arrived in Kyria, I have spent much as, as much time as I can afford trying to reach out to the diaspora and bring them home in my labors of thus far borne fruit, many, many fruit actually. Just last night I concluded a party in fragrance where I brushed shoulders and exchanged words and promises with many of these lost sons and daughters of Kyria. In exchange for the financial support, I promised them lucrative contracts and business deals in the resurgent realm to make their time and money worth the investment. I've indebted myself under a mountain of favors, but like any good business creature, I'm good at finding ways to get uh, others to hoof the bill. Make sure our grain shine and the rest of the government will make excellent patrons exchange these favors with, after all. Everything I do for the realm benefits them greatly. So, my, soon my vision, and the vision of the realm's lost foals, will emerge triumphant over this period of reform. We are all organized, disciplined, connected, and funded in a way that no other Kieran is in, in this realm is, even with our matriarch. We'll be Kira sabers, and as such, we will make sure that we are amply rewarded when time comes. And this was from good old Fickle Current. Uh, call upon the Diaspora. I get more cities, which is pretty nice. The Road to Vermilion, which is not bad. Um, that's not bad. Modify our Gearing Society. Let's see, you get more output, which I do like, and construction speed, and all that stuff, that's pretty good. Like I said, over this side, we can kind of like do that last. 
Um, which one do we want the most? Monthly population, construction speed's nice, you lose stability though, big weekly population growth, which is not bad. Opening up the ports. Uh, calls button, this one. This one's not bad too, I like this one as well. Geological surveys, that's pretty decent. Land possessions, or repossessions. Industrial bread basket, economy. Yeah, we want this one, so we gotta go to this one. So we'll call upon the diaspora. From the very beginning of the south, some of our most talented and educated Kieran fled the realm to look for a better life elsewhere in the world for a century. Those Kieran and their descendants have flourished abroad, gaining skills, knowledge, and capital that they cannot gain here at home. I must bring them back to Kieran and ask them to contribute to the modernization of our nation. And then we'll do, uh, well, I guess, you know, Kieran on the world stage, opening up the ports, yeah. I don't want to lose any more political power. I definitely want to hear it fast, though. Scholar monk traveling syndicates. Monks and priests have long been the preeminent backbone of Kira's education system. Traveling across the land to spread their teachings of the way of fire with the common Kirin, and training those who enter their order to read and write. By recruiting these traveling syndicates to educate the populace, we can make bold steps in combating illiteracy throughout the realm. So right now we're doing alright. we got quite a bit of weekly stability coming along. A whole 1%, or actually 1.5%. Um, but we only have so much political power, which is unfortunate. We could always use more. But that's alright. But as the comments include from the last, on the very first episode, uh, the level of quality and continued support this mod gets still amazes me, considering I was playing this back when Equus was the only continent. Absolutely. Emma Gray's return home. Fickle current. Watch from Fragrance's harbor as another ship pulled into the port. The ships have been arriving in Kira's northernmost port city by the day, each one loaded with dozens of Kirans making their return to their ancestral homelands. These were the Kirans of the Diaspora, descendants of Kira who had, or Kiran who had the good sense to flee the realm when the science began. Many had longed for a home for their whole lives to reconnect with their people and their families, but unwilling to sacrifice their livelihoods to scratch out an impoverished living in squalor uh, that such a move would force upon them. But now, with the silence ending and matriarch superior rain shine inviting all Kieran living abroad to return home and help modernize the nation, the idea of had found the excuse it had been looking for to finally cease living abroad like exiles and return home as heroes. The ship in front of Kieran had sailed in from Gryphonia, judging by the flags hanging from its smokestacks, and the business Kieran pushed against the crowd surging off of the ship to find one particular face. He found him in the body of a green Kieran with a white mane, and as soon as the two recognized each other, they stepped forward and embraced on the ducks. Curved the green sailing and exclaimed, so good to see you, I feel like it's been years. Only well, a few cypress snow, but it, years it has been. The two Kieran stepped back, and then cypress followed Kieran as the two began to move towards an automobile parked on the cobblestone dock roads by the docks. I'm glad you came, Current continues to trot it, though I imagine giving up a position at Green Back University had to been rough. Not as rough as trying to educate you back in the day, Cypress joked, but my talents would be better suited here than in Neil. The Kieran are in desperate need of somebody to educate them, we have to bring the realm standards up to snuff with the rest of the world or we will be left behind. Two sat down in the back of the automobile, and the driver slowly pulled away from the harbor. The realm of the diaspora is something the realm desperately needs, Kern agreed. The Kieran living here are all poor peasants living in the mud of their farm. The realm needs us if it's ever going to make itself great again, even if half these farmers see us as foreigners trying to end their way of life, but I imagine the matriarch will amply reward us for saving our nation when all is said and done. She'll owe everything to the Kieran like us. That's a powerful debt to hold. Except petitioners, we lose weekly stability for more political power. Uh, we're going plus 1.5. Oh, now we can celebrate the mid autumn Festival, which is really good. It's one of the most important festivals in all the realm, making it time to celebrate a successful harvest and prepare for the dry season. Granting holidays to our hardworking Kieran throughout the realm will greatly bolster spirits and allow every Kieran to return to work following the festival, refreshed and committed to creating a new and better Kiria of tomorrow. Get 10% more political power, 10% more stability. When you're, move, when you're done, you get plus 5% more stability, which is actually really good. So, you know what? We do these. Because we already have a lot. Let's click this one first to so lose that stability first. Because I want that political power. Um, so we're going to lose a little bit of stability, really. But immediately get more political power. And we get plus 5% more uh, stability at the end. So that should be okay. Um, they said, oh, Kieran returnees. As the diaspora return home, these long-lost sons and daughters of Kiri need a place to live, thankfully. Kiri is a vast room full of land, and most of its towns and cities are underpopulated, meaning it'll be easy to find homes for them all. This is the added benefit of boosting the average literacy rates in our population centers, even if it comes with a wide variety of potentially subversive foreign ideologies, or ideas. Another comment says, huh, journal entry is definitely an interesting addition by the devs. I have to agree so. Oh, look at that. This is from, uh, Rising Sun. Tip of the spear. There was perhaps nothing quite so refreshing and relaxing as traveling the roads of our splendid nation, especially when those roads were freshly laid, no less. Ooh. It's a humbling experience that truly brings one closer to Concord. It's a communion that can be shared with one's company, and the care that you cross his path with along the way. My fellow mystics and I have spent the last uh, several weeks traveling along the new roads laid down in the rural west of our realm, spreading the glorious news about the rising fire, and how we must adapt the tenets of Concord's faith to a new day. 
The science has taught all of us who follow the rising fire important lessons, namely that we do not need a pyramidal religious order to understand our intentions, and that we do not need the temptations of the modern age that we turn us away from our glory, that we do not need the legal codes and shackles of some foreigners' ideas of governance to run our nation in defiance of Concord's will. Verdant and chrysanthemum thrive during the science because we learn how to properly interpret and adapt Concord's intentions to the century of communal isolation that it bestowed on the realm. Common care and organization in the communities, each finding their own meaning in Concord's creations, and working together for a truly classless and equal society can do more for good for Kira than the way of fire ever could in the modern era. The doctrines of yesteryear belong in yesteryear, and they modern, must modernize too along with the times if they are to hold sway in the future we proudly strive towards. We have spread the news and beliefs of our doctrine to countless Kieran on the roads we have traveled, and we have been repaid amply in the kindness of strangers and even by the government officials of our matrix superior. Wherever we travel, some Kieran is willing to offer us a place to stay for the night and a warm meal, and it is well known to treat one of the Concord's priests with kindness and bites her blessings upon your household, and government officials give us alms and gifts, encouraging us to continue to spread the word about the end of the silence and motivate the populace to rejoice. Though most do perhaps mistakenly, they believe that we are the priests of the old tenants of the way of the fire, not mystics of the rising sun, and doubtless weekly we would get into the heated confrontations with them if they knew the truth. Most, most officials, from Vermilion and I have gone to know, are fairly dogmatic in their old beliefs, and will not react well to any care in professing something some would see as heretical, but what they do not know will not harm them, and will make our lives easier as we continue to spread the word. We have enlightened many converts today, just as we did the day before, and as we will continue to do so tomorrow. We are the forefront of a movement, the tip of the spear, and the fruits of our labor will one day be sweet to uh, to say it until then. We must do our best to make sure Concord's true divine will is heard throughout the nation. Cool. We set up the counter attorney. So now, with this one, we can do this one. We lose 4% uh, stability. We get 1, 2, 3 uh, dockyards and 30,000 penalty power if we do this one next. But, the Alkira Collegium. Kira's first modern university, the Alkira Collegium, will train the next generation of native Kiran intellectuals with the assistance of professors and scholars educated in foreign lands such as Equestria and Yale. However, with new ideas comes with new dangerous thoughts. Will we let our professors teach freely, or should they be monitored by the Reform Bureau to weed out radical thoughts? Oh. Oh, we're down to 70% now. Oh god, that's not good. That's going down by 1%. Oh, that's really not good then. Bolster the way of fire. Um, you know what? I'm going to do that anyways. Just stop losing stability, please. Can we can we uh, have the uh, mid autumn festival again? We'll take a second one. Open up the ports. I don't want to lose any more stability right now though. Army experience gain is not bad. Road to Vermilion. Technological imports. Factories lose even more stability. Northern industry. Uh, we already have. Uh, oh, the vestiges of the silence is not good. Modernization's coming along though. Oh, so you get 300 weekly manpower, which is nice. I guess Road of Vermilion. The roads that once connected Vermilion with the rest of Concord's realm have long since been overgrown, owing to their disuse during the silence. Using priests to recruit local laborers to get the cause, clearing and establishing these roads will be crucial to once more unifying the realm under the Matriarch's superior range trans rule. Arts and Culture Campaign. Oh, that's not bad. We can do that one later, too, if we need it. Order on the Corp. With the Imperial Constitution finally written and delivered to every town in Kiri, no matter how big or small, Autumn Blaze had hoped that the worst of the challenges of that document would were faced with behind it. But while the rest of the realm read and ratified the Constitution, the city of Rhapsody quickly rejected the part of the Constitution related to the implementation of the new judicial system. After a quick talk with her advisor, Fern Flair, she soon figured out why. Rhapsody has always been had this important judicial institution that they're fiercely proud of, Fern Flair explained. The proc procurate of Rhapsody is this entire system where the priests with the greatest seniority in the city can serve as absolute arbiters and judges in any cases or complaints they take an interest in. It's a system where right and wrong is decided solely by whoever is in is highest in the pecking order, and has been entrenched in the city for a long time, even during the peak of Vermilion's power. I can understand why they don't want to let it go. They have to, though, Autumn protested, frowning at the letter of Rhapsody's rejection. They just can't accept part of this constitution and keep their own judicial system. The constitution is needed to standardize the laws and practices across the entire realm so it's easier to govern. They can't even claim that they're doing it for the way of fire, even when Winter Frost agreed to it, and she, she's the voice of our religion in Vermilion. And Vermilion, but not in Rhapsody. Then Flair quickly countered, pushing this issue could create tensions between Vermilion and Rhapsody down the line. It might be better to let them have this exception just this once. Once we give one city an exception, the others will want their own. Rhapsody's friendship is important. I have to let an exception. Nope. 
Uh, no, someone else says, I can't wait for the update. So it says, uh, Kieran, where's Autumn Blaze at, girlfriend? So it says, Pony Chinatown. Someone else says, okay, another request. When Kira is fully released, can you do the Communist Path? Sure, yeah, why not? That sounds like fun. Eventually. Keep, you gotta pass me about that, but yeah. Uh, so, reply to letters. We get more weekly stability, which I do want. And get some more uh, stability at the end, so I think that is totally worth it. The Collegium. I do want to open up the ports, though. But the roads are over a million, because it gives more political power. Autumn Blades let out a sigh of relief and stretched her sore legs. It is the last of the bills to lay the foundation of the All Kira Collegium, Kira's first modern university, and heavily inspired by the academics from Yale. They finally passed the floor by a razor within margin. The contentious issue that had turned what should have been a good idea, every Kieran could agree on, into a par parliamentary nightmare had been the university's stance on religion. The university was officially secular, and would not make mandatory the attendance of sermons and obs observance of holy days that were crucial to the way of fire. When a frosty religious clique had fought tooth and nail to reject the proposed university's secularism, claiming that it would corrupt Kieran intellectuals for generations to come and only breed heresy and disrespect to Concord, while Fickle Curran, as proposed president of the new school, Cypress Snow, I claim that removing a religion from the electorate would allow new ideas to grow without the shackles of tradition and mysticism to hold them down. The debate had been furious and lasted for hours, and in the end, it fell on Autumn Blaze and her supporters to decide the matter in Kern's favor. The university would be secular, and Cypress Snow would be its president. But that had not been the end of it. As soon as the floor cleared from the vote, Winter Frost stood up in her booth and put her hooves on the vermilion rails separate in the seats from the plenum center. Are we going to plant the seeds of heresy in her garden? We must at least have some care to watch over and pluck the weeds as necessary, she began. I motion that the Collegium be placed under the jurisdiction of the Reform Bureau. This kind of right-wing radicalism that current and its cronies bathe and must not be allowed to breed at our academic centers, or we will have turned our backs on Concord and the Matrix Superior. Fickle Current was quick to respond, hopping to his hooves, only after having taken a seat moments before. You lost a fight over the university, and now you wish to cripple what you cannot control? He spat back at her. The traditionalists control the Reform Bureau. You would stifle our academics instead of letting them grow and blossom. Before Frost could respond, you turned to Autumn Blaze and addressed her directly. Premier, your faction decided the last vote, so put an end to this one as well. You know that Winter Frost and her traditionals and censor this university, or the future of Kieran Literati, or Literati, will suffer for it. The Collegium must be independent. The Reform Bureau will curtail the spread of radical ideas. Yes. A gearing consolidation. I get two more civvies, that's not bad. Uh, technological imports. If we would advance as a nation, we cannot afford to waste time rediscovering technologies we, that have long since been perfected in foreign lands. By asking the return Kieran Literati, or Literati for help in supplying the nation with cop copies and examples of state-of-the-art technology, we can reverse engineer our designs and rapidly scale up our industrial capabilities in a very short time frame. Quickly change to still plus one and a half, which is good. Ah, and this is from Winter Frost. Praise be to Conqueror that in her divided wisdom, she has seen fit to end the silence that has blanketed her realm for too long. The Kira people have done 100 years to repent and reflect on the sins of modernization that nearly did all on the hard work of the way of the fire and unifying our sacred and quarrelsome race centuries ago, and I feel that our society and culture has learned a great deal from the experience. Concord imparted her not well to punish her errant children through matriarch noctilicent charm, and now she has decided to forgive us through matriarch rain shine. Now the only question is this, did we learn a lesson the first time? The matriarch charms reign unchecked and unfettered modernization nearly collapsed our society, as the hedonism of modern conveniences turned our society away from the simple truths of the way of the fire. We, our parents, our grandparents, and even our great-grandparents have atoned for these mistakes. As proud supporters of tradition as I am, and naturally wary of any change that could undermine Concord's divine authority in our lives, I nevertheless believe that we can safely bring the realm out of the silence and into the modern era through careful reflection and consideration of how our choices align with Concord's will. We cannot be willing to blindly turn our faith from our matriarch to enlighten, enlightenment and luxury, for then we lose sight of our Concord's vision. Foreigners like Fickle Current and his capitalists have been born and raised without Concord's guidance in their lives. They are no followers of the way of fire, they should not be allowed to dictate the future of Kieran's society, but their money and innovations can serve Kira and her vision all the same. One example is the expansion of roads that many of my fellow priests and mystics have volunteered to organize and lead. All across the realm, my fellow spiritual leaders are recruiting peasants from the fields to repair and renew the roads linking the realm together and roads that have long fallen into disrepair and disuse throughout the silence. It's important work that needs to be done, and this modernization will allow us to once again reassert Concord's will across the realm. It's a truly noble project and just one of many ways we can use the tools of the modern times to reinforce our tradition and our heritage. But such a venture also comes with its own risks. The disconnectedness of the silence was a test placed by Concord to measure our devotion and reward our faith in her. But now that we are reconnecting with the realm, it is clear that some have failed the test. Hotbeds of heresy have sprung up in the West, even in cities such as Verdant and Chrysanthemum, where the mystics and the followers have turned away from the way of fire to adopt their own set of heretical beliefs. 
Connecting Vermilion to these cities is not just a one-way street. Just as they allow the Matriarch to reassert her authority over the West, they allow the Heretics to spread their lies and falsehoods further into the East. Such heresy is unacceptable. I'll do everything in my power to stamp it out before corruption can ensnare Vermilion. Such as Concord's well and as one of her priestesses, I am her instrument. I'll not fail my goddess, nor will I fail my Matriarch. I will be the voice of tradition and heritage that Kira needs me to be for the good of the realm. And this was from, of course, Winterfrost. Ah, no good options to restore roads. I want the most bank for a buck. Um, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Central roads first. I don't want to spend all the political power because that is that'd be not good for us. Um, it's not bad to do either. Geological surveys, more max factories in a state. Do we need steel immediately? No, we don't need anything here immediately, really. So, again, consolidation. As the Karen moved out of the cities at the beginning of the silence, they set up subsistence farms across the countryside wherever they could find land. Most of these farms are small and poorly managed, reliant wholly on manual labor to grow any crops. Consolidating clusters of these farms under one manager and bringing in modern farm equipment will increase their productivity and free up valuable land, of course. Where are we at? Political powers goes up by 0.67. Complete the radiance line. Following the lifting of the silence of Akira, the question of investment in the realm's modernization slowly grew. The influx of equestrian venture capital and generous donations from the Kyrian diaspora and equestria cultivated in the construction of the Vermilion Radiance Line, a railway in the first Akira, to connect the capital of the realm to the port city of Radiance, historically known as the Vermilion Gateway. However, cost overruns and the technical difficulty of carving a path through the dense and hilly Sakura forests meant that this venture stalled. Already, a railroad travels from modern neo Pegasolopolian train termini in the hearts of Vermilion and Radiance both, only to end abruptly the fringes of the Sakura Forest. A little bit of political pressure will breathe new life into the venture to carve a path through the forest and connect the capital to the sea. So going up by 0.5, it's not bad. It's good. Uh, sure. We have only 10 divisions, which is not good enough, but you know, you can barely make anything here, man. Oh. I guess after this, the Riverline economy, because we get 20,000 more pony power eventually in two places, and two more building slots, and more factory output and population and whatnot. Hey, that helps out. 400 days now? Oh my god. Um, the Riverline economy. The great. Melifluve is the lifeblood of the cradle of Kerninity. As vast waterways connect distant towns and cities while providing fertile ground for farmlands in between, investing in the local economy that has grown around the river will make the strength of our nation that much stronger, allowing us to create a booming business growth in our heartlands that fuels growth throughout the realm. Yeah. The Seeds of Greatness I said something the wrong, the premier, you barely touch your tea, fickle current raising eyebrows, autumn blaze, hot teacup and magic, staring at but not really drinking the oolong. If something has come up that is bothering you, please speak freely. You should consider a great deal of responsibility as a premier, yet you do not tackle, have to tackle everything at once. Or everything alone, I should say. Valiance. Uh, recon. Ooh, construction speed. Protection against bad luck. What does that do? I'm sorry, I'm uh, distracted by this. What is that? Okay, sure, why not? Doesn't, oh, oh, this seems important to do. Autumn sighed and set her teacup down. Kira's about to fall into famine, she said in a dour tone. Fragrance and rhapsody of urban so rapidly with the discerning diaspora that they're draining her granaries and warehouses months faster than originally planned. Um, our population is beginning to boom while fear Kira and work the fields now that they did in the silence. Agricultural output isn't keeping up, and unless this year's harvest doubles last year's, Kira will come the winter. We need to modernize our farming techniques alongside our society, current swiftly concluded. Neither you or I are farmers, but I did learn of new techniques being developed in Grifonia before I left. One of the more interesting ones was closed planting. Triple the density of seedings in a plot, then double it once the first batch is time to settle in the soil. The thought is that the plants of the same species won't compete against each other, returning greedy yields to smaller plots of land. Alongside that, we can try a deep plow in the fields. The soil at the top of the earth is what the crops use uh, up year after year, draining it of fertility until it becomes barren dust. But plow deeper and more fertile, untouched soil may be found. That would ensure healthy yields for our farmers. Autumn chewed on her lip as she tried to determine if what Colonel was saying was actually making sense. Do you have any evidence that worked in Griffonia? We're not farmers, so we can't afford to act on something without proof it'll work. Correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't the first planting season start soon? When Autumn nodded, she continued. The morning secretariat is slow, dreadfully so. I appreciate the merits in sussing out the finer details of the proposals across its floor, but it sounds like we don't have time to wait on them. If we're going to adopt the techniques, a decision needs to be made now before the farmers start planning. 
At any rate, the sorghum foundry owns large plots of farmland and peace and plenty. I can commandeer the farms to test the techniques for you before the plant second planting season. Sorghum's farms of peace and plenty will make an excellent testing site. Preliminary trials of these new agricultural techniques will be carried out. We're going to need all the farms to field of people. We can't risk risk testing new techniques. Oh, we'll risk it. Why not? Except petitioners bolster the way of fire. That's 136. I'm going to risk it, yeah. Uh, so right now we get, if we do this one, we get nothing else. But we get more political power in the end. Ah, oh, screw it, why not? So basically we get nothing here. And we get almost one a day. Is that worth it? Honestly, probably not, but whatever. Industrialize the breadbasket. The farmland between the branches of the great Melifluve River is the most fertile in the land, with the benefits of modern farming techniques and tools. It alone can produce enough food to feed every Karen in the nation three square meals a day. Investments in the breadbasket will strengthen the nation as a whole for years to come and ensure that no Karen goes hungry ever again. The first train from Radiance. Rain Shun watched with awe as a metal monster chugged into Vermilion. Though she hid it under the mask of quiet and dignified splendor, she'd learned to show up for her subjects over the years. The newly but Vermilion Grand Central Terminus was packed with Kieran of all trots of life, jammed so close together that the regiment of Banner Kieran brought on for security to struggle to keep the crowd from pushing them onto the glistening steel tracks in the station. No, Kieran wanted to miss the less exciting event, and although Rainshine knew that her presence at Miss Matrock was a formality of media stunt, she couldn't deny that she found it all exciting as well. After all, there could only be one first train from Radiance to Vermilion, re-establishing the link between the Rum's capital and the traditional gateway along the coast. This moment, mundane as it normally otherwise could have been, meant something fantastic for so many Kieran and for the prosperity of the Rum itself. When the train finally rolled into the station, every Kieran present, present let out a cheer and stomped their hooves for the pony engineers at the controls. As the engineers were escorted out of the engine and fed with garlands, food, rice, wine, uh, rain shines serenely, serenely, smiled out over the crowd. With the completion of the Vermilion Radiant Slider, Rum was once again part of the outside world, she announced, too much hooting and hollering. As a marvel, the first fruit of what I sincerely hope will be a bountiful harvest between our humble Rum and our generous partners, the ponies of Equestria, hoof and hoof, I pray to Concord in all her glory, that our two nations will have many more partnerships of mutual friendship and cooperation such as this one. Then, to the surprise and all the crowd assembled, Rainshine stepped forward with her entourage and boarded the train as Kieran engineers replaced the ponies in the train engine. The train whistled as Rainshine waved out the window and the crowd cheers that she made herself the first matrix superior to ever travel the realm by train. We were piercing the country back together bit by bit. And that was worth it, I'd say. That was worth it. I'm going to industrialize this because I do want to get down here eventually too. Uh, hurts our consumer goods. We're getting to this one. Better army XP gain here anyways. Uh oh. Piracy's Phthysian submarine. Ah, oh, crap. The situation in the South Korean Sea has reached a new level of danger. It has been reported and confirmed by Pathisian and Kieran authorities that the pirates of Auburn Isles have managed to seize a Pathisian submarine off the coast of the pirates' safe haven. The sub reportedly suffered engine problems two weeks ago, forcing it to surface near Nakur. It was swiftly set upon by the pirates, and the captain of the submarine surrendered the vessel, where it was towed back to Nakur with a cruise and chains. After pressuring the crew into repairing the submarine, the pirates have begun to employ them in surprise attacks on merchant ships and convoys that wandered too close to Auburn Isles with terrifying effectiveness. With a modern submarine on their side, who knows just how much worse things will get before they get better? Swashbuckling submarines, what's next? Buccaneer battleships? Fine, we'll reassemble the banners next. Carrier once possessed an impressive military supported by the banner system, where each city contributed soldiers to a local banner that could be rallied and commanded at the Matrix's discretion. These soldiers would then be given land following their service, creating an entire class of proud soldier citizens. It's time to rally the soldiers once more to face the threats of the modern era. B big trouble in Little Carrier. Adam Blade still hadn't gotten used to the formal military battles from the general as she entered the room. But she had enough meetings with Coral River that she was gradually getting used to it. The general self was always kind and friendly, so that didn't bother Autumn, but it was more than a fact now that she found herself involved in military intelligence briefings that threw her off. She never imagined the military would be partially answered to her, yet she also never imagined that she'd be in the position when she was a foal. Multi population. Ooh, political parking. Yeah, we're going to go with that. The majority of the realm was quiet, save for a few scuffles with bandits in the west, but the big issue is fragrance, Coral River said, tapping a map of Kira for emphasis. Paramilitaries who call themselves the gleaming scales have all but broken out in a gang warfare in the streets against a coalition of social and religious forces, including Way of Fire, Mystics, and trade unionist movements and fragrance. They're popular with nationalists in the realm and mo mostly led by diaspora returnees, which explains their ideals. The gleaming scales seem to have imported a wing body and fascism almost down to the letter, and trust me, I've been a wing body. I should know. Okay, so it sounds like it's time to get to the military involved, Autumn said. Why haven't they been dealt with already? Because the fickle current in the NAKP have often used the gleaming scales as under-the-table enforcers for the policies and fragrance and rhapsody Coral River elaborated. They are farther right than the NAKP is, but they aren't afraid to join forces when it suits them both. So normally, going after gleaming scales would be unfeasible because Fickle Current and his allies would bail them out. 
However, there's always been a split between the NKP and the Gleaming Scales lately. We could crack down on them now, but they are only a fringe movement, and the situation of fragrances is delicate. Clearing the muck and embolden other parts that fill the power vacuum, like the Gang of Rising Fire Adherents, who call themselves the Cascading Sparks. They've become a major player in the conflict in the past few months, and they're extremely popular with the poorest of the poor in the city. With they lack in funding and equipment, they make up for in sheer determination, and they've blooded the noses of the Gleaming Scales more than once. Besides, they're hardly pleasant Kieran, and they don't have our nation's best interests in mind. I'd be lying if I said I'd, say I'd be sad to see them go, but we can only focus on one or the other. As soon as we attack one group, the other will go round to uh, go to the ground until the coast is clear. She shrugged and deferred to Autumn with a bow of her head. At any rate, the decision is not mine to make. That responsibility rests on your shoulders, Premier. Situation and fragrance is too delicate to disturb. The gleaming scales must be put down before they become even stronger. The cascading sparks are the real threat here. Wait, I'm going to stop them. Oh my god, we lose so much here. How much? They don't have that much influence here. That's too too delicate, and I don't mind doing applying the letters. You know, ten percent more political power, which is fine. But we'll do this one. Reassemble the banners. We're gonna start working on this, I guess. Uh oh. And then what is it? Uh, Seafair Marines. Hmm. So we need both these to do that, which is going to take even longer. Which I'll industrialize the breadbasket next. Yeah. As we must industrialize it, and it's September still. We are slowly getting a little bit of daily XP. Not enough. Cool. Verdant manufacturers, huh? You know, but the ports. The port of Fragrance was one of the most important ports in all of Kyria, connecting her nation with traders from as far as away as Grifonia. Fragrance's port was shut down when the silence began, and its harbors have fallen into decay. With enough investment, however, we can return Fragrance to its former glory, and the Fragrance can once again connect us to the rest of the world, of course. Astrology as propaganda. Oh, yay. More political power, more stability, and the end get 5% more stability. The Banners of Vermilion. Ranchon stood in the mass of plows of the open air uh, Verdigris Rotunda outside of the Imperial Palace, counting the numerous uh, colorful feather banners fluttering the slight breeze of the dreary day. A small drizzle had settled over Vermilion, and two of her palace servants used their magic to keep the rain out of her regal body, but the Kieran assembled in the plaza before stood tall, stoic, and proud. Some were young, barely more than colts and fillies, while some were older, their skulls weathered and cracked with the passage of time. But one thing drew them all together, and those were the colorful banners they rallied around. You few, you proud, gallant few, Ryan Shine began, addressing the crowd with a respectful dip of her head. You are the children, grandchildren, or even great grandchildren of the last soldiers that served my mother's thousand banners. Your ancestors served well in the thousand banners and were rewarded amply with land upon which to start a family when they retired. Their children and their children's children served after them in the banner. Like my own family, your families become strong military dynasties that will survive the worst the world can throw at them, even something like the silence. Her eyes shifted to look out of the plaza, noting all the empty space unoccupied by the tiny gathering of Kieran in front of her. I summoned you here through Imperial Decree because it is time to rebuild the Thousand Banners of Vermilion. You be the first to serve me, should you choose to follow in the footsteps of your ancestors. You will be made captains and officers, and you will protect the realm from any threats, just as your forebears did. There are not a thousand banners standing here before me, true, but I look forward to the day when this rotunda is filled with a thousand colorful banners, like a rainbow falling under the earth. But the first banners, they will be yours, and they will be honored by Concord Blessing. So I ask of you, Kieran in the realm, who will step forward and serve the matriarch? She did not have to wait for a long response. One by one, the Kieran under each banner stepped forward, carrying the banners with them for the rain shine of blessed with a touch of her magic. One by one, they knelt before and were swore their oaths to the realm, just as their ancestors did once long ago. And one by one, Kira earned its banners back on that day. Today, 100 banners, tomorrow, 1,000. Nice. Good. It's October. Ooh, we're gonna lose this soon too. So now it's back down to 0.5. We're still working on repairing the central roads. Let's just still get this for now. That's that's good. Um, that's not bad. I like getting this free cities. Uh, riches of the Melifluve. The far branches of the Melifluve once carried their exports down its waters to the city of Verdant, where they once were organized and recorded before being launched to the rest of the realm as valuable products or to the world as great trade goods. The towns along those branches have long since withered with the collapse of the economy, and you're helped to become prosperous once more. The 
Extend the high synth accord. Urban led modernization. I do want this one as fast as possible, but we can't do this one until we get all this stuff done here too. So, uh, so that will help out slightly with uh, political power. The breakthrough, max factories in the state, mobilization speed. I like this one more. Or political power. Ooh, plus, ooh, that's not bad. I like that. Society of passion. Blades of glory. Ooh. Modifiers to trickle back and XP loss are debuffs. You lose more trickle back and you uh, lose more XP loss. Pious children. Ooh. Oh man. Ooh, that's good for consumer goods. Treasure must be too, huh? You know what? We're gonna go with architectural geomancy. Why not? Verdant factories? Uh, the city of Verdant is proving to be a fertile ground for the growth of modernization in the realm. With abundance of labor and room to expand, the working class in Verdant is growing faster than perhaps anywhere else in Kyrio. With all this new labor comes a spread of new and radical ideas, and the workers that build factories today make it ideas about taking them back tomorrow. So now we are back to losing stuff every week, which I don't like. You can do both these. That costs a lot, though. Oh my god. The last sunrise of sunrise. Matrix appear rain shine retreated to her city after lunch. A worrying thought pricking at the back of her mind. Ever since Ember Wayne had come to her seeking recognition for the banner of the covered cage, her thoughts were troubled with what her premier had said and what that meant for her realm. Had this paramilitary group really been operating without limits and without check for this long? It bothered her that she knew so little about them. They were apparently organized by her mother and have been operating under her command for decades. Now they are claimed to be loyal to her as Kira's ruling matriarch. They could be useful, there was no doubt, but Autumn Blaze had made it clear that working with them was a double-edged sword and would come with its own host of problems. Chief among those records she fought or found in a tattered scroll that reported on the progress to her mother. Though short and laced with jargon, Rangel was able to assess out the real story instead of the banished report. It detailed an intervention in the town of Sunrise and how quick and decisive action by the banner had dismantled the heretical society inside of Sunrise. It sounded so clean on paper, but when Rainshaw brought up other reports and letters that had been sent around the time of the banner's actions, it painted a far bloodier story. <coughs> Sunrise had once been home to a millenarian sect of the Way of Fire who believed that the Vermilion dynasty had failed Kyria and that Concord could never be so cruel as to punish the entire realm with something as harsh as a silence instead. They believed that the Vermilion dynasty had acted out of corruption and greed, and its mother Kira of the Silence and for its loss for absolute power. By the turn of the millennium, Conqueror bestowed a new avatar on Kira to overthrow the Vermilion dynasty and return Kira to greatness. And so the town and its inhabitants refused to follow the decrees of the Silence and prepare for the new avatar's arrival. By all accounts of the time, what few there were, the city of Sunrise was peaceful and prosperous, opening to sharing its wealth with its neighbors and modernizing in its own way, at least until the banner of the covered cage descended on the town. The inhabitants were slaughtered to the last for charges of heresy and defiance of the science, and the entire town put to the torch. All this the banner had done in the name of the matriarch and Concord, and though the story had become something of a folktale in Kieran's society, the reemergence of the covered cage would surely reignite those stories and fill the peasants and farmers of Kiri with outrage. It left Rain China at a terrible impasse. She didn't know what she should do about the story of Sunrise and the banner of the covered cage. Should she come to clean to her subjects, apologize for the decades-old massacre, and condemn the actions of the covered cage, or should she suppress the incident as best she could in the hope of maintaining peace and calm? So it all must come clean about its past if it wants to move forward. The knowledge of what happened in the sunrise would do more harm than good. Sooner or later, the truth shall emerge. Fine. You can have the truth for now. But only for now. Mm, we get one, two, three, eight. Eight more infrastructure. That's not bad. Uh, your research should be increased by 5%. Already get more factors right now. That'll be done in a couple of years, oh god. Plus 30%, huh? We're trying, man. We are trying. Max factories in the state, voting slots. A few more civvies. Strive from one and peace and plenty. A messenger is here to see you, Premier. Senator Glow wore an autumn blaze before the Imperial messenger heard in Autumn's office. Autumn looked up from her paperwork and opened her mouth to offer the messenger a greeting, only for the Kieran in front of her to quickly toss a half dozen scrolls down Autumn onto Autumn's desk before she could a, get, get a word out. There's a famine of peace and plenty, the messenger said, bowing her head. I didn't even need their messages to know what they were about. I saw it with my own eyes. The farms are failing and Kieran are starving in the towns. Those letters almost certainly are asking for Vermillion's help in solving the famine. 
Autumn was taken aback, and it took her a few moments to find the words to respond. Police, peace and plenty is in famine? How could that be? When Fickle Current proposed implementing new farming techniques there, it said they would be limited to the Sorghum Foundry's private land farm, or farmland. How can the entire breadbasket out of Kira be starving? Sorghum owns more farmland in the area than you think, the messenger explained. They officially own only 300 acres of farmland around the city limits, but they forced several thousand more acres of farmland owned by the independent farmers into sharecropping after they helped to create and then brought up titles to the land in the name of the Matrix with the help of the NAKP. The farmers owned and worked the land at Sorghum's leisure, and earlier this season, Sorghum forced them to all adopt new planning practices if they wanted to keep the land. Autumn Blaze was shocked and taken aback, of course. Kern had neglected to mention that little detail when he proposed his new farming techniques. And now they had all failed, they were taking down pe Peace and Plenty with them. How is Kira supposed to feed his people if its most fertile and prosperous farmland had failed? If Peace and Plenty was struck by famine, Autumn could scarcely imagine how terrible things were about to become for the rest of Kira. I thank you, messenger, she said, staring off into space above the mare's head. Leave the notes and yours dismissed. I will try to find some way to deal with all this somehow. I should have known better than trust Fickle Current. Oh, crap. <coughs> our exploding population, the movement of Kieran away from the subsistence farms filled in the countryside and into our reopening cities has created a dire crisis in our food supply. Cities are emptying their granaries much faster than anticipated, and old farming techniques are insufficient in providing enough food to keep the cities from starving. We must find a solution to this crisis and encourage our fellow Kieran to give everything they can afford to see us through this next drip of winter. Which we already kind of already in. So we did that, so showing what little we have. Oh god. Dang it. It started with a single cart rumbling down the dirt road to a fragrance. That cart pulled by an elder Karen who had seen dozens of seasons come and go, had been loaded to the brim with as much weed as it could hold. And when he arrived in a famine stricken fragrance, he merely unhitched himself from the cart and wandered off, only to return to the cart once it was empty to take it back to his farm. Day in and out. The elder Kieran would make the trip to the city, giving away his one cart full of wheat to any Kieran who needed it. He became a hero to local Kieran, and when his cart broke a wheel on the journey into town, the smith made a new one for him for free as a son of things. It was long before the story of this humble farmer spread throughout the countryside. Shortly after, where there was once one cart, soon there were two, then five, then ten. More and more farmers gathered up everything they could spare and began making their journey to fragrance, delivering to Kieran and Eva for free. Within a month, the same started happening in our other hungry cities in the realm. The poor peasant farmers with barely enough land to feed their families started to solve a crisis that the NAKP and large consortium farms could not do, and in doing so, began to knit their communities together. With food filling bellies once again, the tempers began to cool and Kieran started to sing each other's friends once more. Then a hungry rob of mouths that would take their next meal away. Even matriarch uh, Superior Rain Shine herself spoke of the nation of the movement, and issuing an imperial decree to establish a National Farmers Day as a holiday and thanks to the peasant farmers for saving the nation from famine by sharing what little they had. As for the farmer who started the movement, he simply returned to his farm without giving any care in his name, unwilling to be put on the national spotlight as a hero. In his own words, the one reporter that managed to track him down his home said, I just did what I thought was right. Kieran were hungry, and I had something I could spare. Simple as that. Sometimes it's the everyday heroes who save the good day. That's the big names in government. Whew. Okay, that's better. God. You know what? Uh, as much as I want to do that one. Um, hmm. We do need the forts here. Or the ports. But we need them immediately. I don't want that stability, too. Um, we do need to get down here pretty quickly, but through all this, because this one requires one of these two. This one requires this one. And this one, and this one. Uh, it's 1% stability. This one's good to do as well. Uh, Vermilion Armada. Our once proud navy was mothballed and later scuttled as a resort of the silence. We control a large swath of coastline in eastern Zebrica, yet we have no navy to patrol it. We must begin to build and assemble a modern navy to keep our coastline safe and allow us to protect our force over the waves that we rightfully rule. Oh god, what do we have here? What's going on? Oh, just probably the verdant thing. Verdant and bloom. There's another issue I want to talk to you about. Autumn Blaze looked up from her tea at Fickle Current, a small frown curving her lips as she met Fickle Current's eyes. The business Kieran always wore a suit and today was no different. Even in the heat outdoors, it made him look intelligent and sharp, but also marked him as an outsider, some Kieran who hadn't lived in the realm during the silence, instead thriving in Grafonia until the town was right to return to the home of his grandparents. Every time he said something, Autumn had reminded herself that the two of them might as well be different species. The only thing they had in common was a race, and their hopes for bringing the realm out of the darkness, or the dark century of the silence, though even in that, they differed. These, uh, rising sun heretics, they're growing ever more powerful and burdened, Current continued, unaware or simply indifferent about Autumn's frown. Communalists who think that the silence was a beneficial realignment of Kieran society, and that our treasured way of fire has failed us. They're even starting uh, attracting Marxists and Stalinists who are in their numbers. You know what those are, correct? 
a violent revolutionary ideology that thrives on toppling monarchy and castrating the beneficial ventures of capitalism? In some opinions, yes, Adam Demure, but I believe in the grand gallop onward. We can cooperate or incorporate every king's ideas in rebuilding our nation. Cooperation makes us stronger. And divisions make us weaker. They must be stopped and they must be crushed now before it's too late, Cur current urged her. Use the power of your position officially to denounce and disperse this filthy corner of our society. Do it now before the heresy grows and our matrix appears as the next monarch to be overthrown. I believe in the grand gallop onward. How can we be gallop if we leave Kieran behind? The risk of the rising fire heretics joining forces with Marxists is too great. Uh, I can't afford that, so... We're gonna get slightly more communism every day, then. Develop the eastern seaboard, which we do need to do, too. Um, land and repossessions. I don't mind this one, that's not bad. Ooh, this one's good to do. The trans Courier Railway. It appears to become united and modern. The way of bringing people and goods from one side of the nation to the other is essential. While the great Mel of Louvre has long served as a crucial highway for a realm, they cannot reach everywhere. The construction of modern and standardized railways throughout the realm will bring your people together like never before. Yeah, this one's good to do. Give some free infrastructure. Urban led modernization. Modernization is as has been time and time again. Starts in the cities and trickles down to the countryside. Though our urban centers declined under the silence, we can rebuild them with new infrastructure that can support the modernization of the realm. Those are the side effect of allowing us to draw more care into cities, bringing them closer to whole new levels of productivity. That'd be good. And it's almost February, my friends. Look at all that naval XP. But, uh, the rising sun. The wonders of modern technology are truly a blessing from Concord. Where we once roamed from town to town and village to village by hoof, the advent of modern transportation in the form of the railroad was greatly aided in spreading the beliefs of the rising sun, or <laughs> rising fire, to the Kieran of the Rome. We could visit several towns in a day, whereas before we could only visit one town in several days, stopping in inns or farms along the road and speaking to only a hoofful of Kieran before moving on. With such an efficient vector for proselytization as a railroad, the rising fire is spreading faster than ever, and more and more Kieran and more and more towns are finding the truths in our teachings. This is truly one of the greatest on boons our movement has ever seen and proves that modernization and the rising fire are made for each other, of course. When night falls and a day's tri track laying has ceased, miniature shanty towns spring up at the end of the line. They are populated by an entirely new class of Kieran who are more eager to embrace the rising fire. On any given day, I speak to track layers, coal miners, mechanics, and even prostitutes who populate these transient railroad rail side camps. Many are pleased to have a job free of dull monotony of farming and fishing, but they also feel inadequately rewarded for the services they provide by the foreign business gear to employ them. The work they do is backbreaking and dangerous, and yet they barely earn more than farmers and fishers do for their labors. The way of fire it does not care for them and would rather they, they not exist at all. As the traditionalist mystics and the priests are wary of the new development happening in the realm, but the rising fire supports them. They provide important labor for their communi communities, and the as a conqueror they are favored by our divine blessing. Under our teachings and guidance, they are helping to build communities and appreciate their work and reward them amply. We'll do what the leaders of the realm will not do. Acknowledge them, and recognize their troubles, treat them as equals, such as Concord's will, and such is my purpose on this earth. As a faithful servant, I will not rest until our will is fully realized. Oh god, railways. A hundred political power. We don't have that, though. And that's going to take forever to do, too. So, stability is more than 25, which is, going, which is not bad. Industrializing society is active in more than 40 factories, which is going to take actually a long time to do. And it's only February, so. So with that one done, we definitely need to do this one as well. But I'm gonna do this one a little later so it doesn't hurt us as badly. Carry on the world stage wouldn't be bad for ah, racer speed though, that'd be good though. Mm. Ah, screw it up and other ports. So we'll do this one next, and then carry on the world stage. We've come far in reforms, and the world is beginning to take notice. It's time that we invite delegations from all across the world to Vermilion to witness not only our traditional culture, but the advances we have made. This isn't all fun games, however. Kiri needs help to move in the modern era, and making a good impression on our foreign peers will make them more likely to lend us aid in the gardens of tranquil fluorescence. Nice. Ah, finally. Good, good, good. And we're actually losing police ability now, dang it. 200 is just too much. We lose one a week. 15% of political power. Or we don't do that at all. I guess we should balance things out a little bit more, too, anyways, right now. Yeah, this one's going to take a long time to do. Because right now, Garen Society is right here, which is hurting us really badly. Wow. 
a quite happy night. Autumn Blaze paused the door on the outside of her full uh, hood home, having just finished dinner with her parents and a long, long, long time spent catching up with everything she had accomplished since moving to Vermilion and as the Matrix premiere. Her parents had been as thrilled and ecstatic about her accomplishments as ever, but even for her ever talkative Autumn, she needed a bit of time to uh, herself to relax her mind and take a break. So spying the hill she used to slide down in the winter, Autumn turned towards it and began to canter up its grassy slopes, humming to herself as she trotted. It had been an exhausting few weeks, but everywhere in Mascot, the decorations hung from buildings and strung between rooftop services as an easy reminder of the fruits of her labor. She just finished a chaotic two weeks of trying to organize a mid-autumn festival as a national holiday, and tasked that couple with her usual duties, I left her mentally drained by the time the matriarch had given her permission to return to Mascot and celebrate the festival with her family. The festival was in full swing, and the streets were aligned with music and singing and laughter, but away from town, under the full moon, the world was quiet and peaceful. When she climbed the hill, however, she was surprised to find her friend Fen Flair sitting there having a picnic dinner as she watched the foals chase each other through the meadow with paper lanterns while her, their parents relaxed nearby. She didn't go so much announce her presence as she did trot over her parents' blankets and flopped down onto with the groan, and Fern only chuckled as she offered Autumn a mooncake. Busy day, premiere. Please, for the love of Concord, do not call me that tonight. Autumn groaned, taking the mooncake and biting into it. It was delicious, just as she remembered, and put a little bit of energy back into her. But having Fern use her official title made her frown. Fern, you ever feel like there's a huge weight on her shoulders that's going to crush us flat? If take one wrong step, because I do, all of Kira is depending on me to hold things together. I'm the one standing between this happy night and civil war. I have nightmares about the plan of erupting into chaotic inferno of riots in the streets, of our home burning to the ground. It's just a lot, you know? It's almost too much for one mayor to bear. That's a good thing you're not just one mayor, Autumn Fern said. We're all with you. You've got the matriarch on your side. You can do this. If there's ever was a mayor for the job, it's you. Then she smiled at her. Now, come on, cheer up. You don't want to be thinking about your job during the festival, right? You're right. Thank you so much, Fern. Thank you so much. I want more weekly stability, but at what cost? Reply to letters? That's worth it. That's definitely worth it. Yeah. Thousand banner system, huh? Good. I'll open up the first next gonna hurt us by four percent, but we'll take it. Because we need those three naval dockers anyways, because they don't add to our uh, factory limit or factory stuff too. And we get eight free infrastructure and more pony power, which is nice. Look at that manpower we have now. And we're still remobilizing, so. That's actually kinda nice. This is a long day though. This is an 80 day focus. Jesus. Carry it back on the world stage, because we need that research speed too. We've come far in reforms, of course, like I read earlier. So, yep, we need to do this one next. And after that one, develop the Eastern Seaboard, maybe. The Kieran living on our seaboards were almost entirely reliant on fishing to survive throughout the silence. As a result, the Eastern Seaboard in particular is woefully underdeveloped. We can make use of these scattered fishing villages to cobble together local workforces for new dockyards and shipyards, along the coast that will boost our naval production and, co and economy. If I choose one of these, I know I'm going to regret it. The many roads that meander through our great realm have decayed through a century of neglect and become ever growing with vegetation. Let us lay new and modern roads to reconnect our provinces together and further the great task of modernizing our country. The horrific reek of sewage and pollution struck Autumn Blaze like a slap to the face as soon as she stepped out of the train and car in the Verdun train station. Even a few hundred meters from the shoreline, the great mellifluve stank like rotting fish and foul eggs. In a glow gag as she followed Autumn off the train and she quickly pinched her nose shut with a clapped hoof. That smells horrific, she shouted over the hiss and whistled the steam engine behind him. What crawled up Concord's divine rear and died? This is terrible, Autumn said. One thing she made her way from the training station towards the river. Sickly Kieran dotted the streets, leaning against the walls and grimacing while others briskly trotted to where they needed to go, you nose know, covered with cloth ma masks to keep the stench as best they could. When the delegation from Vermilion arrived on the shores of the Great Melaflu, they found them covered with dead and rotting fish, the once blue waters of Kira's lifeblood as a sickly green and black. To their horror, they saw a few Kieran and one, one of the island communes of Verdun dropping buckets into the poisoned water to bring back to their homes. It was little wonder Verdun was so full of sickly and starving Kieran. The factories upstream are causing this, Autumn said. I've heard reports that they were dumping industrial waste in the middle of flu, but I didn't imagine it was this bad. That's not just the factories either, Senator remarked. Farmers are dumping fertilizer into their fields and it's running off with the rain, and cities are exploding in population. They don't have anything near robust enough sewage systems to deal with the waste. All that's getting dumped into the river and it flows downstream to Verdun. We just step in and do something to stop us, Autumn decided. We can't let this current language like this. The pollution is killing them, and if we don't do something about it, it'll kill Verdun itself. If we don't save the lifeblood of Akira, then our nation will die. Poisoning melted. Nice. 
Like Lord of Kyria, the Great Millifluve is a river that brings life to the beautiful realm and facilitates trade throughout its fertile valleys and lush forests. But while the Great Millifluve gives us life, we are inadequately killing it. Our modernization projects have resulted in factories dumping toxic chemicals into the rivers to mingle with fertilizer runoff and sewage from our growing cities. If the Great Millifluve dies, then Kyria dies. There's no time to waste in finding a solution. <sighs> the pollution of the Great Millifluve will have long lasting consequences for Kyria and the Kyrian people. The harmony with nature. Autumn blaze and winter frost watch side by side as five priests and priestesses of the way of fire led a procession of followers down the banks of the great millifluve outside of Vermilion. Singing, chanting, and simple music tapped out on a drum and chimes accompanied them down to the water's edge, where the symbol Kirin waded out into the blue waters of Kirin's lifeblood. Autumn, for a part, was just happy to see the clear blue of the water return once again. The poison of the rivers was receding, and Vernon had already made great strides in recovering downstream. It was something the Plenum and the Morning Secretary could be proud of, at least. Well, maybe not Fickle Kern and his cronies, but the rest of Kyria. It's still not as clear as I remember, when Frost solemnly noted, her eyes wandering away from the ceremony and toward the deepest blue of the river. There's still some poison in her lifeblood, just less of it. Completely eliminating pollution was an impossible order, Autumn explained. We have to seize our modernization completely. You know we can't do that. Kira needs his modernization to rejoin the world, but we could at least limit how much factories could dump into the river and force them to explore other means of dealing with their waste, she hesitated before adding. Think if we're convincing the mystics of the Way of Fire to support efforts, we wouldn't have been able to do it without them. The sixth tenth tenant of the Way of Fire says we must live in peace and harmony with nature, so the priestess said. This is not harmony, but perhaps it is peace. If the future children of Kira can benefit from what we do today, then I'll sleep easier for having my mystics find compromise outside of Concord's divine wisdom. As the chanting of water came to a close, two of the priests waded back to the shoreline and set fire to the fuses protruding from a rock rack of fireworks. One after they did the other, the fireworks shot into the air with colorful sparks and briefly daz uh, dazzling displays of light. When a frost bowed her head at the display of thanks to Concord, and Autumn let him do the same after a moment. It was a perfect end to a peaceful day, and Autumn was thankful that she and Winter could share it in a friendly company instead of his bitter rivals on the planet and floor. We can work together to make a harmonious and prosperous Kyria yet. I want that extra research speed, but still. I want to develop the Eastern Seaboard. Oh, that's a good to get done. Nice. Nice. You get, definitely have to do those too. We're looking decent so far. Most of the way of fire, huh? As we open up the ports. Um, Kira on the back, back of the world stage. Yeah, I don't want to lose any more political power, but we'll do that one too anyways then now. And then we'll do this one too, which would be great. So, geological surveys, um, because I do want to do the Fragrant Flotilla eventually too. Sitting at the bottom of the Fragrant Harbor are three old warships, once of the most modern ships in the realm, but scuttled during a sailor mutiny in the city during the silence. They've been underwater for decades now, but expeditions have confirmed that they are still in a decent condition. Raising these three ships and retrofitting them will allow us to field three outdated but formidable ships in our new navy. But I think we're ended there for today. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll continue to modernize and continue with the Great Gallop Onward with Kyria. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.